Hello and welcome back. This is video 2 in my high poly X-Wing series. And of course this here is the X-Wing we're making. In this video we're making this sh the shaded parts you can see right here. So this will pro probably be the most boring video out of the entire series. It's very straightforward modeling so I apologize for that. But um, any helpful tips I can give you I will. Okay so I'll start modeling the wing now. And before I do that, let me just adjust my front image so we can actually model this wing accurately because at a slant like this, it'll be very difficult. So it actually needs to be raised a little bit. There. And then there's a rotation option over here. And this is really great because, and it's actually recently been added in 2.74, the version I'm using at the moment. Before, I would have to open up Photoshop and then rotate it there. Which is, you know, it's not a lot of work, it's easy to do, but if if it's something small, you, like a very small angle, it can be a little annoying. So, yeah. Another thing you must be careful of, notice this top view, this top image is actually, um, it's still at a slant here. So when you model and model from the scale of our front image rather than the top. What I'm going to do here is just add in the circle we'll use to model the turbine, uh, this engine here. And also take up a, or so I'm going to go Shift A, add circle, and then over here, if I hit T to bring up this toolbar, we see we have add circle properties over here. And then I'm going to change this to 64, so the circle will contain 64 vertices. Uh, vertices. Um, you'll once we start modeling, you'll see why we need so much resolution. But let's just scale this according to our the reason why we're adding this now is so we um, so we can get this coverage over here nice. Yeah, so it's a little bit difficult because there's so many so much stuff going on over here, but you know that's that's good. I like that. And I'm actually just going to pause the video quick so I can change the resolution of this background image. It's slowing my computer down. Now I want to extrude these up and then join it with this piece over here. So what I'll do is select the faces I want to extrude up. Then we're gonna hit um, E X and it'll extrude on the way that didn't work. Uh, G X. And this extrude it to this line here. I'll then delete all these faces that's be that's between the object we want to merge, just like that. X delete faces. Then go to vert select mode and then just select them both alt alt ends join them and I see I forgot my screen cross keys. Yes.
Hold him. Hold him. Alright, cool. I don't know what happened over here. Let me fix this. As you can see, the the shading of my of these circles I just added is different compared to the rest of the geometry. This just means that my my normals are in the wrong direction. So Blender thinks that the outsides over here is actually what's supposed to be on the inside. But we can fix this by just selecting them. I'm gonna select those, go to shading and UVs, and then just hit recalculate over here under normals.
So now I'm going to show you a real cool effect. If you look at some reference images, you can see we have this type of a grid on the top here and at the back there as well. So I'm going to select everywhere where that grid should be. That's like here and then deselect these. Just until we have this, then I'm going to duplicate this, right click to cancel um, the, the uh, moving it, then P for separate, and then I'm going to separate by selection. Now I can se select where I just separated by selection, and I want to have more geometry of course, so I'm just going to go into object mode, uh, control number two, uh, where it actually we should apply some mean, mean creases to these edges. Let's do that. By um, shift E and then just drag your mouse out. And now I'm going to apply the subdivision surface. So we can go back into edit mode. In order for what I'm about to show you to work, we must remove all of these vertical, I mean horizontal loop cuts. Okay. So we're going to do, we can only do this one, one at a time. So I'm just going to select this whole thing here uh, in face select mode. And then we're going to hit spacebar and then just search checker deselect we can select that and now you'll notice oh well it did exactly what i said i was going to do and this is this is really helpful especially when it comes to someone like this now i can extrude this and then shift s and drag it up so you're just about there you can do i can do the exact same thing with the other side Whenever we're dealing with circular objects, um, adding stuff on like this can be a bit of a, can be a bit tricky. But I'm going to show you a cool a cool tip here that can make um, adding uh, like something like a plate like this to an object uh, really easy to a circular object really easy. So a few things you want to do before you um, do what I'm about to show you is first add in all the holding edges, just like this, and make sure that it. You're modeling it from a plane first, and then we can thicken it later once it's been, once we position it on our circular object. Yes, yeah, so I think that's all the holding edges I'll need. So now I'm going to go back to my first layer, and I'm just going to position this right above where I wanted to, to apply to. So about there it looks fine. And now I need to name the circle so I can identify it. Um, it's just called circle, so actually I don't need to name it, it's identifiable. Then with what I want to be um, placed onto the circle, I'm going to go to the modify menu, add modify. I'm going to select something called a shrink wrap modifier. And then it says here target, select our circle. You can immediately, you can immediately see it's now latched itself onto there. So let's just position this where we want it. Uh, about something like that looks good. I think that's okay. And now I can go ahead and apply this. Actually, maybe not. Let me add some more geometry to it first. So it's uh, like three loop cuts there. There you go. That looks a bit better. Okay. Now I don't have that big thing in the center there. Okay, now I can have just apply this. And now I can add some thickness to it. There you go, just like that. I can put my subdivision surface and it looks great. Dark on there perfectly.
Okay, so that's about it for this video. Last thing I want to do is add in some panels at the bottom here. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to draw in what I, a rough shape of what I think I'll use live loops. I duplicated this by accident, let me just delete that. Okay, so I want something that looks like, mm, like this. Not to be exact, that's probably too big. Let me try that again. Yeah, that looks cool. That looks alright. And then another one over here. Then we're gonna have some wires throwing um some lies going in between these two. Maybe that's a bit too big. That's too small. Something like something like that. Awesome. Model that. Okay, so now that I'm finished with that, let's select what this want to be here, oops, not that, just like that, and then I'll just extrude these to about there, and then later in later video we can add those cables running through here. Actually that's just with the select I will say Alt S and then I'll just scale these. Uh it's not working the way I want it, it doesn't matter, we can do that later. Okay, so that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.